This is Major Chambers and the Adventures of Little Bagshot in the Monastery of Sound. I sneaked up and bared at it, the blighter. Ha ha, let's just say, Vicar, he wouldn't have sat down for a good long time. Oh, oh Major Chambers, you're quite the storyteller. Your days in Her Majesty's service sound positively marvellous. So colourful. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. More tea, Vicar? That was simply delightful, Major Chambers. I must say, these fond of the fat days are simply divine. Mrs. Phelps! Mrs. Phelps! Yes, sir, Major Chambers, sir? Ah, oh, there you are, woman. Pour the Vicar more tea and hurry up about it, will you? I'm so sorry about this, dear Vicar, but my army pension won't provide for the service of a decent butler. Careful, woman! Really, Major Chambers? I was under the impression that your newly found music career was going great guns. Does it not provide a more substantial income? It's true, my album The Sound of Love is selling well. But unfortunately, the royalties are slowing coming in, my dear man. Pardon me for asking, but what musical endeavour is it that you and Lady Olivia are using the church for later this afternoon? Ah, that, my dear Reverend, is my new musical project, The Monastery of Sound. I am fusing Gregorian chant and the choral abilities of Lady Olivia and my own voice to create a piece of popular music that will hopefully provide a more wholesome sound for the young folks of Little Bagshot. More wholesome, that is, than the frightful racket they fill their ears with these days, with its promiscuity and low-brow, lower-class appeal. Hear, hear, Major Chambers. Well, I'm sure that Little Bagshot will applaud your efforts. Talking of the trouble of Little Bagshot, I must be on my way. I have promised to visit the Grunley family. Poverty and unemployment have taken their toll. And the children, I'm afraid, have gone a little wayward. To the dogs, more like. If they were my men, I'd have taken a bayonet to them. Or better still, my father's tactic. The blunderbuss! They'd think twice if they got peppered with shot every time they sullied the bandstand with their grotty graffiti. Well, Major Chambers, the Lord teaches us forgiveness. And Mr Grunley has fallen on very hard times ever since Lord Waxford dismissed him for scrumping that apple. One must, of course, forgive, dear vicar, but what was Waxy to do with that lazy thieving oath? I'd have thought that thou shalt not steal would equally apply. Of course, he should not have stolen the apple, but it falls upon me in my pastoral role to care for those less fortunate. And you do a wonderful job, Reverend. One just hates to see you waste your time on layabouts. Anyway, I shall see you to the door. Thank you, Major Chambers, for a wonderful morning. I do so dearly hope your work with Lady Olivia goes according to plan. I will look forward to hearing the results tremendously. Well, goodbye, Vicar. Perhaps we'll see you at the church. Perhaps indeed. Goodbye, Major Chambers. Frightful lily-livered liberal. If it were left to him, little Bagshot would have gone to the dogs years ago. Something really must be done about those awful, awful grunnies. Really, Major Chambers, sir? You did not talk about a man of the cloth like that? How dare you, Mrs. Phelps? Get back to the scullery before I have you arrested for stealing my silver. But, but sir, I, I never, I never. Back, I say! Yes, sir, begging your pardon. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Why did you have to go and steal his lordship's apple, Freddy? What are we going to do without your income from the estate? Oh, don't go on, Carrie, love. It was only a poxy apple. Oh, Waxy has hundreds on his arches. It's hardly scumpy to steal just one. But you know what he's like. He won't put up with any nonsense. I should have him done for wrongful dismissal. One apple indeed. Wrongful dismissal? Ha! That's a laugh. You nicked it, Freddy. And what of the boys? They were bad enough before all of this happened. The school were even up for expelling them, but for me pleading with them to give them a second chance. I'll get another job, Kerry. You'll see. I'll be all right. That old sad wax, he won't keep us down. I suppose. But where, Freddy? There isn't that much work about. And what about the boys? They need their dad to be a role model, not out of work for stealing. I'm going to go and see Brian Tucker later, see if he needs any help. If only I could get my tractor fixed, I'd have plenty of work. And don't worry about the boys, I'll talk to them. Never mind about that blooming tractor, just get it sorted, Freddy. Hello, hello, Cowie, Freddy. Oh no, what's he doing here? That's all we blooming need. Be nice, Freddy. I invited him here. He wants to help. Ah, here you are. Hello. Hello, Rigger. Come in and make yourself comfortable. Ryan! <coughs> Ryan! Hello there, Mr. Marson. What can I do for you today? Ah, there you are, Brian. I want to discuss a uh, mutually beneficial opportunity I thought you might be interested in. Oh, yes. And what might that be then, Mr. Marson? 
I'm looking to introduce some GM crops to the area. I was wondering if you'd be willing to turn over some of your fields to me for a reduction in your rent. Of course, I would need you to take care of the practical side of the operation. Oh, I, I don't know, Mr. Morrison. I'm, I'm quite stretched as it is. Of course, if you need extra help, I'd be willing to pay for some extra hands. And let's be honest, Brian, you're not exactly keeping up with the rent. Well, I, I, I suppose that's true, but won't GM be a bit unpopular with the village? You know what people are like, Brian. They're scared of anything new. They'll get used to it. GM is a future, Brian. A glorious, well-filled future. Well, okay, then I'll give it a go. But if I can have some extra help, that is. Of course, of course, Brian. Whatever you need. On my own, pretending his... It's... Is that old Walter? Walter! Walter! I say, hello, Walter! Oh, Blumenek. What's he want? Good day, Walter, and how are you this fine morning? Oh, he's been worse, Major Chambers, sir. Where are you off to in such fine fettle? I'm going to the church to record some music with Lady Olivia. It should be a wonderful session. You're welcome to come and hear us record. I know you like your choral music. Or you'd rather listen to a cat strangle. What was that, Walter? I, I said I think that sounds all right. But I, I, I've been thinking on it. I've got some jobs down at Green Embles. Shame, Walter. Never mind, no. I'm sure you'll hear it sooner or later. You rotten old stupid old cocky! You you you're sir. rubbish! Who's Let's that making that racket? I can't make up what they're saying. Oh, you think that's the Grunley boys, Major Chambers. Sound like they're giving you a bit of cheek there. What? Those Grunleys will rue the day they mocked me. I will make sure they suffer for this. They're just young hotheads, Major Chambers. They don't mean much by it. Young hotheads, maybe. But where there's rot, you have to cut it away. I am sorry, Walter. This has spoiled my mood. I must be on my way. Hopefully I will see you later. Not if I see you first, you prancing Greek ninny. Black, send him off. The blighter was down for a gooseberry. Take that, I said. Never saw a point of badgers, or foreigners for that matter. Lord Waxford! Oh, Lord Waxford! Well, hey, well, hey. who's this now, huh? Hello there, young filly! No, oh, Lord Waxford, I'm glad I've caught you. I have a couple of village issues I'd like to put to you, and I'm hoping we can spend some time discussing them. No time like the present, spit it out, word! Oh, okay. Well, the first relates to my newly established school, the Maharishi Academy. We are hoping to help the young of Little Bagshot realign their chakras and take on learning through green and positive harmony. We're hoping that you'll be a willing patron. Of course, we know how busy you are, but it'd be wonderful to have someone of your standing in the village on side, as it were. Good God, is that a pigeon? Look at the size of the blighter. If only I had my gun. Oh, Lord Waxford, please do try and pay attention. Uh, of course, of course, dear woman. So sorry. You were saying? The Maharishi Academy? Oh, oh of course. H how is the Maharishi? It's a long time since I was in India. Oh, oh never mind. My, my second point regards the activities of a certain Charles Masterson. Masterson? Oily little fop slivering around like a poisonous snake in the damnable grass! Oh, oh well, quite, Lord Wexford. Well, he has taken it upon himself to introduce genetically modified crops into the fields of Little Bagshot, without a single thought of the potential impact such an environmentally careless act would have. Oh, yes, 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 woman, but what's to be done to thwart the toad? I'll stop him in his tracks and run him straight through. His gizzards will hang from my flagpole! Oh, Lord Waxford, I never knew you cared so much for the environment that you would be so passionate. Enviro? What? What? Oh, oh yes, 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 of course, dear lady. Now, tell me how I can help. Well, as Charles is only leasing the lands around a little bag shot from you, and this is a significant change of use, perhaps you could suggest to him that he's in breach of the terms of the lease. I'm sure there would be provision for potential environmental damage. Mage Chambers, it's such an honour to be helping you record this wonderful piece of music. One can't wait to hear the finished results. Uh, the honour is all mine, dear Lady Olivia. When you sing, it is like the angels are descending from heaven. This song will be so much the richer for your divine contributions. I knew you were a great chorister, but I had no idea to such an extent. I do feel we should do a few more takes, though, to do justice to your voice and exemplify the full range of your talents. I would be delighted, Major Chambers. No effort is too great to bring about such a creation. Oh, you're too kind, Lady Olivia. Simply too kind. Anyway, if you care to return to your microphone, we should begin. I, I say, my man, can we cue another take for Lady Olivia? Ready when you are. Are you ready, my dear? Oh, ready indeed, Major Chambers. Okay then, and record. Rolling. <laughs> Here you 
you fine little urchins. I'll have you cut for garters. How dare you break the windows of St. Cuthbert's. Get, Get stuffed, stuffed, you old cutter. We, we never, never broke, broke no windows. windows. It was, it was that, that old brat cat wallin. Those grunly boys have done it this time. Clearly they have thrown a stone through the church window to ruin our recording. Police! Police! Uh, are you sure it wasn't the high note that shattered the glass? No, Lady Livia, as powerful as that note was, this can only be the work of those thugs. I am calling PC Swine to deal with this. They have gone too far this time. Come on, let's go to the police station. It's such a shame it's ended like this. I hope we can get back to work as soon as this sorry business is cleared up. Are you sure you'll go to police station on your own? Oh, yes, yes, I will deal with this sorry matter. No need for you to fret. Goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye, Major Chambers! Right, I'd better make sure there is some evidence so those rats can't escape the chop. I'll just look down here in this flower bed. This'll do. Ah, this stone will be perfect. Now, to plant it in a choice location to secure the trap. Brian! Brian! Wait up! We need a word with yous! Oh no, here's trouble. Just ignore him, Brian. You'll soon go away. Brian! Brian! Oh no, he's blooming running. Oh! Oh! Hello there, Brian. You alright? You seem like you're away with the fairies. Something like that. What are you after then, Freddy? Don't be like that, Brian. What makes you think I want something? Because I never hear from you unless you want something, Freddy. And it usually ends up with me getting into a lot of trouble. Trouble? Brian, I don't know what you mean. All's I put your ways legit. I like to share my muckers way. No harm in that. No harm when it's me getting my collar felt instead of you more like. I'm still paying a fine on him to see his picture made me boy. How was I to know they got the lurgy, Brian? It was all in good faith. They just didn't go our way. I suppose. And anyway, Brian, that was a long time ago. Plenty of water got on the bridge since then. So what is it you want, Freddy? There you go again, Brian. Can't a man just want to have a friendly chat with one of his mockers? I'm sorry, Freddy. I've not been in the best of moves lately. It's been very difficult what with a rent and last winter. I just don't seem to get ahead anymore. It doesn't help with all the other problems that seem to come up at home. Tell me about it. I've been laid off by Lord Waxford and the boys are playing up at the moment. Times is hard, Brian. Times is hard. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your job, Freddy. If there's anything I can do to help. Well, now you comes to mention it. A little bird has told me you might be looking for some extra help. With a project Mr. Marston has put you away. I knew it. I knew you were up to something. How the blazes did you find out about that? I got my sources. Come on, Brian. I need this work. And he knows I'm a grafter. You are a grafter, Freddy. When you're not sleeping in a cow shed. That was once, Brian. And you know we'd had one too many in the hay balers. I reckon your eyes were drooping and all. Come on, what you say? Well, I don't know. Mr. Marston is still not happy about the mess you caused last time he got that tractor running. The oil stains are still in his trousers. I won't be using my tractor, though, Brian. Just labouring for you and Mr. Marston. Plus, I promise to keep out the hay balers. Well, OK. You can start on Monday, provided Mr. Marston doesn't object. You'll be fine, Brian. You won't regret this, I promise. Thank you, me old mucker. I better not regret it, Freddy. You won't, you won't. Come on, let's celebrate with a swift half down the A-Bailers. Hello, Charles Marston speaking. Marston, Waxford here. Well, I'm honoured. How can I help you, Lord Waxford? Marston, what in the hell blazes do you think you're doing? Polluting my land with your perverse modern ideas. I have a good mind to wring your scorny neck. Lord Waxford, I would hardly call it your land. I'm paying a hefty lease for the use of it for the next 25 years. Don't try and slip me on your oily little excuses. I know flannel when I hear it. I've spoken to my solicitor, and by the terms of the lease, any use of the land that jeopardises the good name of my estate or threatens to pollute the soil is prohibited. But Lord Waxford, if you'll just see sense... I'll give you sense, you corrupting little pustule. I never wanted you on my land in the first place, and I'll be damned if you're going to sully it with your Frankenstein fruits. Either you cease this nonsense, or well, I'll have the law on you. Do we understand each other? But Lord Waxford, the money involved... I said, do we understand each other, you damnable blighter! Well, if you won't be swayed, it appears you have me cornered, Lord Waxford. Good! Well, I will bid you farewell. Goodbye, Lord Waxford. Blast it. How did that miserable old curmudgeon get wind of what I was doing? Is everything all right in there, Charles? Just another run-in with the villagers, dear. Looks like the GM crops would be going ahead. Oh, no. What will poor old Brian Tucker do? 
Looks like I'd have to find another way of meeting the rent. Lord Waxford's seen to that. Ha! Huh, him and the eco-warriors. You'd think Lord Waxford would be grateful after you saved his estate, taking all that lease. Well, I can't complain. We're far from the poor house. There'll be another day, another project. Hello? Hello, Quino, are you in there? In here, Cara. Oh, there you are, Quino. What's that you're doing down there? I'm saluting the sun, Carrie. It's a yoga position I find it cleanses me and restores my balance with the eco harmony that is little bagshot. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll give that a try someday. Or I could do with some harmony in my life. Well, Carrie, it does take some time to reach the kind of harmony that will help you transcend the negative karma of today's greed and money-driven society. Perhaps one day you will attain it with a lot of work. Anyway, how can I help you? Oh, I don't know where to start, Quinor. Things have been so difficult recently, what with Freddy losing his job and the boys nearly being expelled from school. They just seem to be getting more and more wayward. They need a positive influence in their lives, a good role model. And I don't think me and Freddy can give it to them, if you see what you mean. No, Carrie, I'm not sure that I do. Exactly what do you mean? Well, we was wondering, that's, that's me and Freddy. That's Freddy and I, Carrie. Freddy and I. Oh, oh yes, sorry, sorry. Freddy and I were wondering whether you would consider taking the boys at the Maharishi Academy. Your boys? Well, yes, Quinor. They're no bother, really. They wouldn't be no trouble, I'm sure. It's not that, Carrie. I have a careful selection process based on the holistic assessment of a candidate's chakra. The whole balance of the place may be thrown off kilter by the wrong types of vibration. But, Quinoa, we are desperate. We need some help. Nothing seems to be getting any better. It's not a boy's fault. I just want a good start in life for them. You must understand, Carrie. This is a small academy that relies on fees to run. We don't have adequate resources to realign those with unaligned yin and yang energies. The balance and harmony of my academy's feng shui cannot be jeopardised. What would I tell the Ponsonby Montforce if their little one's piece of snowdrop were not achieving their full potential because I had diminished my karmic resolve. Oh, 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 but please, Quinor, can't you see how desperate I am? I never cry, but I just don't know what I could do without your help. Please just take a bit of time to think about it. I would mean so much to me and Freddy. Oh, 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 please don't oh, cry, oh, Carrie. Oh. There, there, can't you see my position? Oh, dear, let me get you a tissue. It's just that... Here, blow your nose. Thank you, Quinor. Actually, Carrie, it's just occurred to me that there may be a way I can help you. Yes, Quinor? I had heard about a fund available to small private schools like mine that could provide scholarships and funding to those less advantaged and in need of extra help. I'm sure your boys would fit the bill. I'm almost certain if we're able to secure the funding that we could accommodate your boys. Oh, do you really think so, Quinor? I don't see why not. These grants could be quite generous. Let me look into it, Carrie. Oh, thank you, Quinor. You won't regret this. I promise. <coughs> Oh, who could this be? Sorry, Quinor. I'd better answer it. Not at all, Carrie. Go ahead. Hello? Oh, hello, PC Swine. Oh, no. What have they done now? They what? No, you're kidding. Little beggars. Okay, I'll come right away. Is everything okay, Carrie? No, that was PC Swine. The boys are in the police station. Major Chambers has accused him of smashing the one of St Cuthbert's windows. I'm going to go there right away. I'm sure it's a misunderstanding. I'll give you a lift to the station. Come on, Carrie. Two points to your best beer, landlord. And give us two whiskey chasers as we're celebrating. Steady on, Freddy. Some of us have got to work this afternoon. And what might you be celebrating, Freddy? Seems like you was only in here yesterday drowning in the sorrows. Well, as it happens, myself and Brian here have been entrusted by a certain Charles Masterson to grow a revolutionary new GM crop in Little Bagshot. We are scientific pioneers. Pioneers, eh? Well, Brian, you are a brave man to be dabbling in science and trusting Freddy Grunley at the same time. Looks to me that what he knows about science can be summed up in that tractor of his. We're just planting and tending it. I need Freddy as an extra pair of hands, that's all. Don't let him get to you, Brian. He's just jealous, that's all. As I remember, he wasn't mucking my tractor when I pulled him out of the snow last year. I was when Brian here had to pull you and your tractor out of the ditch the same blooming night after the wheel fell off. <laughs> oh, I, I remember that night well. <laughs> all right, all right, you, you'll see when I get her fixed up. I'll drive past laughing when you're caught in the snow. Who can this be? Oh, oh, it's Carrie. Well, you better answer it. Give her the good news. Hello, Carrie, love. What can I do for you? 
Oh no, what have they done now? Okay, I'll be right there. See you in a minute. Is everything all right, Freddy? No, a bit of bother with the boys down the police station. I'd better get down there sharpish. Sorry to break up our celebrations. Quite all right, Freddy. Give Carrie my love. See you later. Yeah, bye, Brian. Where's he off to? Some trouble with the boys down the police station, apparently. That figures. You need your head saying to get mixed up with him, Brian. He's no good. I know, but he's a meat, and he's got a heart of gold, plus he works hard. When he blooming turns up. True. Brian! Brian! Over here, Mr. Masterson. Brian, I thought I'd find you in here. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. What in the blazes have you two been up to? Do you think this is what me and your dad need right now? We ain't, we ain't doing, doing nothing, nothing more. more! I'm afraid the boys have been accused by Major Chambers here of smashing one of St Cuthbert's windows. Narrowly missing Lady Olivia and Major Chambers during their recording session. We didn't do it! We was just mucking about outside the church! It must have been Lady Olivia's wailing what done it! Wailing? How dare you! You filthy vile urchins! Now, now, Major Chambers, let's keep this civil. Of course. Sorry, Constable. It was a shock of such a cruel defamation of Olivia's beautiful voice. If the boys are saying they didn't do it, what's to say they did? The evidence, my dear woman, the evidence. The boys were not only in the area indulging in cruel horseplay at the time of the incident. They were taunting me earlier in the day, to which old Walter Brambles will attest. They have also a proven history of vandalism and wanton destruction within little bag shots. We never smashed that window, you old goat. Quiet, Jack. We've had quite enough of you. Sage advice, Mrs. Granley. I put it to you, Jack and William Granley, that eyewitness accounts suggest a contrary account of the facts to which you present. Both Lady Olivia and myself saw the stone that you so heartlessly threw in a cruel attempt to ruin the purity of our musical endeavour. I'm afraid that based on the boys' recent behaviour and the evidence, I have no choice but to charge and fine the boys. The fine will be payable now or the boys will have to go to court. Surely a trial is the best way to settle this. They will not learn the error of their ways without the firm hand of the law to guide them. With the greatest respect, Major Chambers, this is the best solution for all concerned. Oh, hello, hello Carrie Love. What's been going on? Oh, Freddy, thank God you're here. The boys have been fine for smashing a window at St Cuthbert's. However shall we pay for it? We've got no money. Well, that is something one would have thought you would have thought about when instilling values in your offspring. Perhaps now you will learn to teach them some courtesy. Oh, put a suck in it, you miserable old devil. What? How dare you? Oh, Freddy, no. That's not going to help. It won't make no difference, Carrie Love. He's never liked us, nor the boys. Uh-oh, there you are, Freddy. Can I have a word? Not now, Brian. I'm just telling this old buzzard what for. But it's important, Freddy. Not now, Brian. Now, how much is this fine? We'll pay it and bid you all goodbye. But where will we get the money from, Freddy? Don't worry, Carrie Love. Brian here has given me some work. There'll be more than enough to pay their blood money. But, Freddy, that's what I need to talk to you about. Now, come on, Constable. Where do I need to sign to close this sorry matter? Just here, Freddy. Here you go. This is a new start for the Grunleys. We've no need to be worrying about the stuck-up old biddies and little bag shot. We're going to be looking to a bright new future. You and your blooming old-fashioned establishment won't keep us down, you'll see. We won't be persecuted no more. Freddy, I really think you ought to listen to me. Oh, what is it, Brian? It's Masterson. He's had to pull the crop. There's no work. But why didn't you tell me before I'd done all that? I tried, Freddy, but you were out of control. Now, now Constable, is there some way this could be paid over a couple of months? I'm afraid not, Mr. Granley. You have to the end of the week or the boys will have to go to court. It seems your cocksure attitude has landed you in some trouble, Freddy. I do hope you'll be able to find the money. Good day to you all. Goodbye, Constable. Goodbye, my chambers. Master of the house. Love I'm going to throttle him. Love Look, that'll help. What have you done, Freddy? How are we going to pay for this? We're going to have to move back to the blooming caravan. You are a clot, Freddy Gronley. I was eating no carry. Carry? Carry? Oh, hello, Quinnour. I'm afraid this is a bit of a bad time. I'm sure it is. I've just heard what your awful husband and Brian Tucker have been up to with Charles Marston and GM Crops. Oi, who are you calling awful? You are awful, Freddy. Carrie, there is no way I will accept your boys in my academy if this is the kind of morality you live by. But Quinoa! I'm sorry, but that's my final word. Goodbye! You've really done it this time, Freddy. And as for you two, get home! Before I clip your ear holes! But, but we never! Don't give me that! Get home with you all! We got some packing to do! Packing, Carrie, love? Yes, packing! 
We're going back to the caravan. It's the only way we can pay for your blooming mouth. Why do you have to ruin everything, Freddy? We can't you just keep quiet? Wait till I get my tractor fixed. Then I'll sort out this mess. You'll see, Carrie Love. You'll see.